Uh, greetings, everybody. Here's a quick intro. If you look in the description, I'm going to put a link to the Book of Enoch so that you can read it on your own when I'm reading it and uh, follow along. So look in the link. All right, let's continue. All right, let's read chapter 15 of the Book of Enoch. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. And he answered and said to me, and oh, by the way, there's a link in the description for so that you could read along. Uh, the Book of Enoch is in the public domain and it is on a website. And all you got to do is just read along. So click the link and uh, it'll open up and you can read along. Okay. And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice, and go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of the earth, and begotten giants as your sons. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women, and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood, as those also who do lie, as those who die and perish. Therefore I have given them wives also that they might impregnate them and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling, and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven in heaven, shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men, and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. And in the introduction to Enoch, I mentioned uh, several studies ago, I mentioned how the, the, uh, there were wars, Israel had wars against the giants. And this uh, doesn't seem to contradict anything. So, chapter 16. From the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits have gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation, the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless, yea, shall be wholly consummated. And now, as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who have been aforetime in heaven, say to them, You have been in heaven. Excuse me. You have been in heaven. But all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones. And these, in the hardness of your hearts, you have made known to the women 
And through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on the earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Chapter 17. Uh, the heading is, the chapter title is Enoch's Journey Through the Earth and Sheol, the First Journey. Sheol is the Hebrew word for, it could be hell or it could be grave. Where your body goes is to the grave. But where did the soul and spirit go? Well, in Old Testament times, the righteous went to Abraham's bosom, which was a place, well, you had hell, and then you had Abraham's bosom. So you had uh, basically smoking and the non-smoking section. Yeah, Abraham's bosom was non-smoking because there was no fire. Uh, hell was the smoking section. Yeah. So chapter 17. And if you want to read about Abraham's bosom, you can read, uh, let's see. I think it's in Luke. Let me look it up real quick. Yes, it's in uh, Luke chapter 16. You can read about the rich man and Lazarus. A rich man went in hell. And Lazarus went into the bosom of Abraham and was not in punishment. Separated from the Lord, waiting for the Messiah, but not in punishment. So, all right, 17. And they took and brought me to a place in the which those who were there were like flaming fire. And when they wished... They appeared as men, and they brought me to the place of darkness and to a mountain, the point of whose summit reached to heaven. Bob's note here. Remember the Tower of Bab Babel, Babel? Well, how come they always build these pyramids and what have you? They're, you know, they were building building their way, their stairway to heaven, I guess, to rip off a Led Zeppelin uh, thing. So, uh, And they brought me to the place of darkness and to a mountain, the point of whose summit reached to heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasuries of the stars and of the thunder and in the uttermost depths where were a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and a fiery sword and all the lightnings. So let's take a look at this fiery bow and arrows. In Ezekiel 5.16, the Lord speaking here, when I shall send upon them the evil arrows, evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and I will break and will break your staff of bread. So the Lord's going to use his bow to shoot evil arrows of famine. Yeah. So, in Revelation, it talks about the rider on the white horse with a bow. And everybody says, oh, that's the Antichrist. I'm not convinced. I don't think so. Because the Lord does have a bow. And we read about the fiery sword uh, in Genesis chapter 3, right? And I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasures of the stars and of the thunder and the uttermost depths where were a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and a fiery sword and all the lightnings. And they took me to the living waters. Oh, I got an entire Bible study on living waters. And to the fire of the west, which receives every setting of the sun. And I came to a river of fire in which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea toward the west. 
And I saw the great rivers and came to the great river and to the great darkness and went to the place where no flesh walks. I saw the mountains of the darkness of winter and the place where all the waters of the deep flow. I saw the mouths of all the rivers of the earth and the mouth of the deep. You know, hell is an interesting um, Bible study. It's always likened as beneath or below. And when you're talking about rivers of fire, what are they talking about? Lava? Volcanoes? You know, lava? Um, can you have fire with darkness? Uh, you know, <laughs> it seems to be that way. You know, lava can be burning hot and burning, uh, you know, but uh, dark. Well, in 2 Peter 2 and verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So, uh, yeah. And then you got Jude chapter 1 and verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness uh, unto the judgment of the great day. Jesus in eight, uh, Matthew 8 verse 12 said, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the children of the kingdom who rejected the gospel message, you know, so, yeah. All right, let's see. Let's, all right, that's the end of chapter 17. Let's go to chapter 18. I saw the treasuries of all the winds. I saw how he had furnished with them the whole creation and the firm foundations of the earth. And I saw the cornerstone of the earth. I saw the four winds which bear the earth and the firmament of the heaven. And I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heaven and have their station between heaven and earth. These are the pillars of the heaven. I saw the winds of the heaven which turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to their settings. I saw the winds on the earth carrying the clouds. I saw the paths of the angels. And I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above. And I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones, three toward the east and three towards the south. And as for those toward the east was of one colored stone and of pearl, and one of jacinth, and those toward the south of redstone. But the middle one reached to heaven, like the throne of God of alabaster, and the summit of the throne was of sapphire. Now remember when we read in Ezekiel, uh, it talked about all the different stones. Yeah, I forget what chapter that was, but it was in the uh, Enoch 11 through 14 study. And I saw a flaming fire beyond these mountains as a region, the end of the great earth. There the heavens were completed, and I saw a deep abyss with columns of heavenly fire. And among them I saw columns of fire fall, which were beyond measure alike towards the height and towards the depth. And beyond that abyss, I saw a place which had no firmament of the heaven above and no firmly founded earth beneath it. There was no water upon it, no birds, but it was a waste and horrible place. I saw there seven stars like great burning mountains. And to me, when I inquired regarding them, the angel said, This place is the end of heaven and earth. 
This has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven. Uh, if you read Job 38, you're, you're talking about stars and sons of God. It's referring to angels. And I think it's in Jude talking about wandering stars reserved under the blackness. Yeah, let me look that up real quick. Yeah, it's in the book of Jude. Let's see, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone on the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead. What, what, what does that mean, twice dead? It's physically dead and spiritually dead. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever see the bible has a lot of symbolism you know people say well i take the bible literally yeah there's times to take the bible literally and then there's times when it's figuratively bible uses a lot of figures of speech a lot Verse 14, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Hopefully I be found worthy to be one of them. Uh, let's see. All right. I saw their seven stars like great burning mountains and to me when i cried regarding them the angel said this place is the end of heaven and earth this has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven and the stars which roll over the fire are they which have transgressed the commandments the commandment of the lord in the beginning of their rising because they did not come forth at their appointed times and he was wroth with them and bound them till the time when their guilt shall be consummated even for 10,000 years. Now, that's interesting. 10,000 years. Um, according to the best Bible scholars that I can find, the earth is approximately 6,000 years old, give or take, you know. At the And my theory is at the end of the 6,000 years, uh, God's going to come back. And at the seventh beginning of the 7,000 year, it'll be the 1,000-year millennium. And then Satan and all his angels will be bound for 1,000 years. And then they're going to be loosed for a little season to stir up trouble again. And... That's covered in my uh, Children in the Kingdom video. I go into this in some detail. You know, there's going to be children in the kingdom, but they're not going to be born of the people in the kingdom. And I suspect it's going to be the children that died in childbirth and died of childhood diseases and abortions and what have you. And they're going to get a chance to grow up and either serve the Lord or serve the devil. And then um, after all that happens, uh, there's going to be the judgment seat of Christ, the great white throne judgment, which is for the unbelievers. And then I guess that's probably going to take about, <laughs> it's probably going to take, you know, if the Lord's judging me for all the stupid things I did, it's probably going to take a lot of time. And, um, you know, it might actually take 10,000 years. I don't know. You know, the angels are going to get judged too. Matter of fact, the Bible says we're going to judge angels. Believe it or not. 
And I'll tell you what, if I got a guardian angel, I'm going to have to give him an A+, because he's kept me from doing some stupid things and dying. Yeah. What are you talking about, Bob, judging angels? What are you talking about? 1 Corinthians 6, 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Oh, yeah. So, and I got an entire Bible study on playlist series on angels. So, good and bad, by the way. In Matthew 18.10, you know, the people say, oh, there's guardian angels. You know, they, they condemn the Catholic Church for saying that there's guardian angels for children. Well, this is Jesus speaking, Matthew 18.10. Jesus says, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Oh, yeah. They got kids, of, you know, the kids of the kingdom have got angels. And mine kept me from dying a few times. So, uh, more than a few times. You wouldn't believe the number of times I should have died. People wouldn't believe it. But it wasn't my time. So. Uh, let's see. All right. Chapter 19. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits, assuming many different forms are defiling mankind. Hmm. It says in their spirits, assuming many different forms. So can these things take different forms? I, I don't know. You know, the Bible is silent on that. And I do not build, I do not build doctrine on the book of Enoch. I do not do that. And I'm still on the fence about this book. Parts of it, I think, look pretty good. And then there's other parts where I'm like, yeah, it's pretty out there. I don't know. And many different forms are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Now that I believe. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. Do you remember the, um, what was that, that Greek story of the uh, women sirens? They would sing beautiful songs or whatever, make beautiful music and uh, they were on an island and they would get the sailors going by that would crash into the island and, and make sure that the uh, ship crashed and killed the sailors, the sirens. You know, they got an entire... The Greeks had a story about that. I, I don't know if it connects, but it came to mind. So, And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man shall I uh, shall see as I have seen. You know, it makes you wonder. Elijah is going to be one of the two end times witnesses, and he never died. And Enoch is the only other person in Scripture that never died. And it makes you wonder if... Uh, you know, it makes you wonder, is Enoch going to be the second witness? I think it's very possible, and that is my opinion. I do believe Enoch will be the second witness in Revelation that confronts the beast and the false prophet in the book of Revelation. Whether or not he wrote this book, I don't know. I got mixed feelings about it. All right, this is the end of uh, chapters 15 through 19.
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.